Hi, in this video, I'm going to make a pendant from a signature and I'm going to use my girlfriend's signature. She is an artist and does painting and I've taken a photograph of her signature and we'll make a pendant from that. There are many ways to do this, but I'm going to use curves. I think curves are not understood well enough and this is a good opportunity to use them in a project. So let's start by deleting this cube. Select everything with A, press X, delete. Now the first thing I need to do is to drag in the photograph I took of her signature into the viewport of Blender. Now this will come in at the angle at which the viewport is set. So I'll press this little Z thing here to make sure that it comes in flat. If you don't do that and it comes in a bit wonky, you can clear the rotation by going up to object, clear, rotation. And that should reset everything to make it flat. Now I need to rotate this to make it the right way up. So I'm going to rotate it minus 90 degrees. And I also need to scale this up. I know it's a bit small. We can always scale at the end, but I know that this should be about five blender units in size. So I'll just scale this up. There we go. So now we're going to add a curve in object mode. Go to add curve and path. It could be Bessier, but I'm going to use a path. Before we continue, we need to make sure this is a 2D curve. So in object mode, if you press this little curvy button here and then change this from 3D to 2D, we can then select points on a curve and move them to the shape of the signature. You'll see this black curve line. And by moving these points, we're kind of coaxing it into the shape that we want. It's not immediately intuitive, but if you play around, you'll get the hang of it. The one problem with a curve is they can't intersect. So we're really gonna to have to use more than one curve here. We we'll use the first curve for this first part of the W, this part here, and then we'll do another curve for this part and another curve for this part. You can select two points on the curve and right click and subdivide if you think you could do with another point like I do here. Okay, this first one is pretty much done now. So we'll add a second curve and we'll do the same thing, but I will speed this up so it's not too boring for you. And now we'll add one more curve so that we can do the last part of this signature and we will have basically traced around the entire thing with three different curves. You'll want as many curves as you need to not intersect things. And you can use a circle instead of a path if your signature happens to have an O in it or something like that. So now this looks good enough and I think we're done with this. So we can turn off our reference image here. And this is what we're left with, three curves, which don't really look like curves, but they are. Okay, for this design, I'm going to make a ring that the curves intersect through. And for that, I'll make a circle. So we'll add a curve and a circle. And now we'll scale it up to where I think it should go. I'm gonna put it about here. And if I jump into object mode, you'll get an idea of what we're going to end up with. So let's get cracking. First thing we'll do is change our curves back to 3D mode. And then under geometry and the little curve thingy again, we'll increase this extrude slider. And if you look from the side, you'll see that it's extruding. We don't really want it to extrude from the side. So click the little Z icon in the gizmo up here, select all the points of the cubes by pressing A, and then in the end panel, under item, you'll see this tilt option. And if you increase that, we get a nice looking sideways extrusion. I will change this to 90 degrees. 
So this is looking quite good. But I still want to make a few little adjustments, which I can do by selecting a point and dragging it around a little bit. Now I can't help noticing that this circle probably isn't in exactly the right place. So if I move the mouse over one of the points of the circle and press L, it will select all the vertices of the circle and I can grab and move them around. And they will stay in 2D in the right plane because we are looking at this in orthographic mode because we press the little Z icony thing. I think I'll extend this point out a little bit. And maybe move this a little bit to make it a little bit more smooth. And this bit definitely needs extending. Okay, this looks good. I'll just have a look at it in object mode. Yeah, fine. Now is a good time to increase the resolution of these curves to make these lines even smoother. And as we already have our curves properties tabs open, we can go over to this resolution slider and I'll slide it right up to 64. I hope you can see that that makes it a little bit better. Now we will give this some thickness, but first shade flat. And now we add a solidify modifier. Curves can have solidify modifiers, yes. And if we look sideways on and increase the thickness slider until we're happy. Remember, if you're 3D printing this, you need to be happy enough for the printer to be able to print it. But this looks about good enough for me. Now we're going to add a little loop so that we can hang this on a chain and I'll just move this a little bit into the middle. Not entirely sure why, but that's what I'm going to do. And now I'll move the 3D cursor up to the top by shift and right click and then add mesh circle. Just scale this down to a reasonable size. Move it up along the Y in this case until it looks about right and then go into edit mode. We select everything if it isn't already selected and go extrude scale. We move that down till it looks about right. And that looks about right. And now all we really need to do is add a solidify modifier to that too. And give it some thickness until you're happy with it. Whoops, go that way. And that should be about right. Though so I'll just move it into the middle and now add a subdivision surface modifier to that. So it's all nice and smooth. To be honest, that looks a little bit thin. So I'm going to go into edit mode and scale these points a bit more. That's it, that looks a bit better. And I think we're done. If we want to scale it, we can, we have approximately how big it is over here. So I think I'll scale this up just a little bit. Now all that's left to do is to export it. And we're going to do that by selecting all our objects or both of our objects, going to file, export, STL. And then we're going to make sure that this is selected, give it a name, and that's exported. So what we're going to do now is going to have a quick look in Prusa Slicer to make sure that this thing would actually slice and print. Now it's a bit small and we can't really see it. So I will scale this up just so we can see what it looks like. You probably wouldn't want to print it this big, of course. Now if I look carefully, you can see the intersections of the curves can just be seen and this wouldn't happen if you remeshed it yourself beforehand but you'll see Prusa Slicer reports no errors and when we come to slice it it slices perfectly fine with no issues this will print now I have made this exact pendant in silver 
and in bronze. Uh, I use a company called imaterialize.com and I'm not sponsored by them in any way. They have no idea who I am, but I would recommend them because their customer service is second to none. And if you'd like to see how to make a photograph into a token, which could also be made into a pendant, then please click the video in the top right hand corner.